Hello, everybody. Uh, this is the December 12th, 2023 open public meeting of the Needham Library Board of Trustees being held via hybrid format, allowing remote attendance. I'll start with a roll call to confirm that the trustees and library staff and other persons anticipated to be on the agenda are present and can hear me. Uh, when I say your name, please let us know if you're here, uh, whether in person or remotely. Anna Geraldo Kerr. Uh, here, remotely. Kay Cahill. Here. Earhart Grace. Here. Michael O'Neill. Here. Megan Small. Here. Robert Pettit. Here. And me, Jay Fialka, I'm here too. Uh, library staff, we have acting director Dimitri Kiriakis here. Is Danielle here today or no? No, no. Okay. Jenna White, administrative specialist. Here. Uh, program specialist, Gay Ellen Bennett. And who's here? I see her. And playing hard to get. Recording secretary, Faith Prisley. Here. Here. Anyone here for the Library Foundation of Needham? I don't think maybe today. Oh, we, and we, that's, that's right. We have Tamara Dalton as a guest who will be introducing in a minute, though I just already introduced you. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. If there's a problem that prevents the completion of this meeting, we will reconvene at 7 o'clock p.m. on January 9th, 2023. I'm sorry, 2024. <laughs> And uh, I hereby call this meeting of the Needham Board of Library Trustees to order at 7.04 p.m. We'll start uh, by asking if there's any uh, representatives of the public who'd like to offer any comments. Is there anybody here from the public who would like to offer any comments? Okay, it doesn't seem to be. Uh, and then I think uh, we're gonna start before we get to the minutes. Uh, maybe Dimitri, would you like to introduce Sure, Tamara Dalton has for us. Tamara is our, well, not you so much anymore. She's been here a couple of months, uh, technical services supervisor. We're very happy she's with us. She's done a lot so far, and she just uh, introduced herself and here to say hello. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> hello. Maybe you, you, you could summarize for us sort of what, what your primary responsibilities are in that role. So I am. Uh, Technical services supervisor slash cataloging, which might be more people are familiar with. Um, so basically, that means every new item that is uh, physical that comes into the library goes through my department first. It's prepped for uh, public consumption, essentially. So it's barcoded, stickered. We figure out how to present it. Um, it's complicated, like librarians' items. Um, but you know, every every book every physical thing you can carry out of here goes to that department. So that's kind of what the department does, but I'm you know, also the supervisor on the budgeting side, working closely with Jenna Dimitri, mm -hmm. and I also am helping uh, do some ordering for nonfiction. Dimitri's wearing his hats. <laughs> anyway, okay. just have a quick question. In your field, what would you say, um, how have things changed in cataloging and technical services? I mean, no, I know technology has been huge in, in the evolution of libraries in recent years. Can you give us a little update on that? Or how, how it has evolved in recent years? Um, well, I think from my perspective, I, I, we're very much more concerned with how the how we can give the public easier access to everything. So there's a pretty big movement to uh, genre five to move away from the D. Mm -hmm. okay. um, that is, Dimitri and I were talking about that. That is a future goal. I would love to see the library embrace specifically starting with maybe children's section so that we see more like a, a bookstore. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, again, my philosophy is to, to uh, make it as easy for patrons as possible to really gear everything toward or the ease of access. Um, I think that's the, the biggest change. And and really moving away from, or not moving away, but embracing the changes in our culture and our communities where people, you know, their needs are different than they used to be. Um, moving toward digital items, moving toward, you know, libraries of things have been very popular. Um, 
and trying to figure out ways to get the community what they need as our as their needs change. I like Thank the you. idea of a folks for <laughs> have, have we seen libraries moving in that direction, getting rid of the really decimal and putting particular categories of books? That's becoming more and more common. We can just add that it doesn't happen overnight. Right. We have libraries not when they pull out like the cooking section, the travel mm -hmm. language, mm -hmm. languages, things that are obviously people are always coming in looking for. So it's not like it doesn't one day to the next just go to like yeah. no Dewey. It's just for the things that people use the most. Right. Children's is all there. Mm -hmm. so. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 I think it's an exciting notion. Uh, and I would say your community could be just interested, but you know, we also need to wait till we have a director. Yes. Or who is that? Exactly. <laughs> can can you hear her? Okay, you want who are listening remotely? I just want to make sure you're 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 hearing everything. Uh, it, it's hello. Uh thanks for asking, Jay. It fades in and out a little, a tiny bit on my end. I don't know about Rob. I'm getting like 95%. <laughs> Could you be more concise? Well, we're very happy to have you. We, we, we've been waiting for you. <laughs> Welcome, boy. Welcome. Well, you're not yeah. 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 Wow. All right. See you Bye. Bye. Um, Katie, it seems like you're next on the agenda. Uh, I'm not sure if Bernie is. Yeah, I see Bernie is here. Yeah. So we're going to have an update on the director's search, please. Great. Um, so at your meeting last month, I had um, given you the update that we had a community paradigm on contract with the town to be our uh, recruiting firm to help with the library director search. Um, so we are joined um, by Bernie Lynch and Sharon. Yes. Sharon Flaherty is also there, um, and they're the principals at Community Paradigm. Um, so I asked Bernie to join us to talk through his scope of services um, so we can get going on a timeline um, to restart. So with that, Bernie, I'll turn it over to you. Oh, great. Thank you very much, Katie. And uh, it's good to be with all of you tonight. Uh, thank you for uh, allowing us to do this virtually. Uh, as Katie indicated, I'm, I'm joined by uh, Sharon Flaherty. Uh, and I will be the ones that will be working on this particular search. We've, in fact, uh, we've done together. We've done all of our uh, library directed searches that Community Paradigm has has carried out over the last uh, roughly three or four years. Uh, we've done now. I believe Needham will be our tenth uh, library director search. Uh, a number of them, I, I believe, you're probably you may be familiar with. We did the Concord search, the Natick search, uh, more recently. Uh, I realize this is a sensitive topic. We did the Watertown search, uh, which we had uh, uh, previously done Watertown a couple of years before that. Uh, we did Norwood, um, uh, a number of other smaller communities. Uh, we also worked with Norwood on the development of their uh, library strategic plan. So we've we've had some interaction with uh, the library uh, community across the Commonwealth. Uh, in my prior position, in fact, I served as a member of the uh, Board of Trustees, uh, in fact, was the chair uh, emeritus of the Board of Trustees of the Lowell Public Library, the Pollard uh, Library in Lowell. So uh, certainly well familiar with uh, the, the role that the library plays within municipal government and within communities. And uh, uh, it's one of, I, I have to tell you, and don't quote me with this with uh, any of the other departments I uh, end up working with, but libraries are one of my favorite departments in every uh, municipality for the for the role that they play in helping um, build community. So uh, we're, we're thrilled to be able to be working with Needham again on this on this effort. Uh, my goal here tonight, or our, our hope here tonight, is to be able to have this be a somewhat of an interaction more than a uh, just a presentation on our part. Uh, I'm happy to put up sort of where we are and what we see as our process, basically following out the, um, the same scope that we have used it successfully in uh, pretty much all of our searches for all different types of municipal positions, but particularly for libraries. And if I could, I'm just going to share with you sort of a timeline, and that will give you a sense of the steps that we see in this process and how long we think this is going to a take until you have a new library uh, director in place in Needham. So I'm just going to see if I can show that to you. Yeah. 
and sort of use this as a guide to walk you through um, where we are. See if I can just blow this up a little bit for you. Let's try this. Bear with me for one second. All right. Uh, we think that this will take uh, roughly 13 or so weeks to carry out, beginning uh, with this week that we're here, uh, the week of uh, December 11th, uh, meeting with you. Uh, obviously, we've we've been engaged by the town, and we're from the town of Needham. We've already started pulling together quite a bit of information uh, for the strategic plan and other documents uh, in the uh, that you have regarding the uh, the library. Uh, but we're pulling all of that together in order to uh, create a position profile or a recruitment brochure that we will use to market this position to the uh, network of uh, librarians, library, potential library directors that are out there. Um, and, and we're here tonight to consult with you and to hear from you uh, on some important topics that I'll come back to uh, in, in a moment. But uh we think it's important for us to understand uh what you're looking for what you need what the, the town of needham is uh wants from its library director so we try to gather all that information during this first stage to develop that brochure uh and then we we begin marketing the position as i say to the uh to the library director community or potential library director community that's that's out there uh we utilize a number of different platforms uh, obviously, this is much more than simply placing an ad in a, um, uh, you know, with an organization or with a, uh, in a, uh, on a website. Uh, we, we do all of those things. We generally, uh, for library directors, in most cases, we do utilize the ALA, uh, as well as the uh, Mass Board of Library Commissioners. We use the uh, various uh, regional library consortiums here in the Commonwealth. Uh, and then we utilize the network of people that we know uh, in the library field uh, to try to build up uh, the, the potential pool that you would have. Uh, we think that there are a number of good candidates here in Massachusetts, but we also think that there are some good candidates outside of Massachusetts in the New England region and perhaps beyond, uh, some of which may not have a connection to Massachusetts, uh, some of which uh, may and are interested in returning. Uh, one uh, aspect that we've we've certainly noted is that there is uh, some sense across the, the country for uh, some library directors that are finding it difficult uh, in the in po currently polarized environment uh, to uh, you know operate effectively, and they're looking to states like Massachusetts and communities like Needham as a place where they can come and and practice their profession, uh, you know, without um, any uh, political repercussions. So uh, we've run across a number of very good uh, candidates that, uh, that we think are, are out there that, that might be interested in, in coming to a town like Needham. But again, uh, knowledge of Massachusetts, knowledge of the Massachusetts uh, system is uh, you know, very important. And we think that uh, that's, that should be our, our primary focus. Um, so our goal here is uh, by, the, the, by, de by December 25th, to uh, have a the profile completed, uh, reviewed with the town manager and the, and the town administration uh, to get that out on the street and begin those advertisements and that recruitment um, just after the holidays so that we have some candidates in place by mid-January. Uh, we will be reviewing those as we go along, um, identifying those of the stronger candidates than those that are, uh, are less so. Uh, and uh, and then sit down, uh, you know, with the with the town and review all of those resumes and identify those that should be brought through the various stages. And we think the stages that you've utilized uh, in the past uh, to involve uh, the broadest number of uh, people from the um, town administration, from the board of trustees, uh, from your uh, community groups that support the library, uh, should be part of this process. And so we think that that process. Uh, can work very effectively, uh, and we're interested in utilizing that uh, going forward. Uh, we see that happening at really towards the end of uh, January uh, into the uh, beginning or middle of February, uh, getting everyone on uh, that schedule, uh, and then uh, simultaneously with those that are you know we are most interested in, or that you are, the town is most interested in, uh, getting the necessary background information references. 
uh, to identify uh, their strengths, their weaknesses, uh, and what skills they may be able to uh, bring to the position that um, hopefully they'll be able to articulate, but uh, we'll want to hear from their references as to whether they're in fact able to uh, carry forward on on those uh, on those skills and those those attributes that are most important to the town and, and in particular to the board of trustees. Um, as I understand it, under the form of government that you have in Needham, the, the uh, we'll uh, have a selection uh, by the town manager that will be uh, reviewed and approved by the uh, board of trustees, uh, and then the negotiation of a, an employment agreement, which would occur at the uh, end of February, the beginning of March. So that's what we see as the timeline. Um, it is a very difficult job market um, for any number of sectors, any number of, certainly the municipal sector, uh, any number of positions uh, in the municipal sector, including library directors. Uh, we saw a drop off in our most recent search um, compared to some of our prior searches uh, because of the, the tightness of the, uh, the market. Uh, but where we you know, certainly are anxious to be able to tell the story of Needham uh, and um, you know, your library and uh, the opportunities that uh, someone would have if they were to become a library director there. So that's what we see, and I'm, I'm happy to take questions on this, but um, that is what I see as the, um, the process. Um, I now have to find a, a stop share uh, to come back in. Um, and I'm interested really in any questions you might have regarding that. And then I'm interested in, uh, we're interested in hearing from you to, um, as to what you think are the important issues facing um, Town of Needham's uh, library uh, and what you would like to see in your new director. I have some notes that Katie has provided me, uh, provided us with regards to the characteristics, but um, if, you, if, you, if the members of the board would be interested in helping us out on this, um, that would uh, certainly aid us in our efforts. May I ask a question? Yes, Kay and then Earhart first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just in terms of the process, um, Bernie, by the way, we, we had lunch together at the library staff uh, gathering yes. um, about <laughs> for six months. I, that's that's right. That's, and that, was my, that was my other connect. That's right. That's right. I, I should have mentioned that, that I did some uh, some training uh, with the um, team building efforts with the uh, with the staff back, uh, I think just a year ago, so. Uh, About a year ago. Yeah. Um, so my question is that I think you said on December 25th, there would be the profile, which I presume includes a job description and the other materials that describe the job. Um, and right. that, that would be shared with the town managers. Can I, I would love for it to also be shared with the trustees. I felt like, the most recent time around, um, we did, the trustees did ask that we'd be able to make some changes to the job description. That was not done. And I do feel like it, uh, you know, as, as partially as a result, we probably didn't get the field of candidates that we were looking for. Um, so this time around, I think uh, we would want to see the materials that are going out. You're probably talking about the, the recruitment brochure and, and the profile. To have a Correct. chance to review, to review those. Yeah, I, 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 I would have a, you know, I would certainly wouldn't mind your, any feedback you might have uh, in that regard. So uh, the only issue that I, I guess I see uh, is timing, um, because you're not meeting again until the beginning of January. I think almost the middle, you know, like the ninth. I think I just heard, uh, um, but certainly um, we we can um, we can certainly try to get that out to everyone and, and get some feedback coming back to us so that we can tweak it as necessary. Katie, do you have any thoughts about how that process might work in terms of how we would be sharing feedback? Yeah, we can send it over for email as long as all the feedback just comes back to me instead of being reply all amongst you. Um, that's, that's fine. And um, I think um, the job description is an HR document that impacts comp and class, but the job posting and the recruitment and the brochure and all of that is um, the marketing pitch. So I think um, the level of review of the job description, we just look at a little bit differently than the job posting. Um, right. So I, job I, I, it, is, will not change at all? From, so I wait to see if Bernie has recommendations for us, but how we think about updating those documents is just a much more structured on the job description side. Right. Yeah, uh, we're certainly happy to look at the job description, but, um, you know, we will, uh, and I believe all of uh, 
need I, I in fact I know all of Needham's job descriptions are online. Uh, so what we'll do within the document that we generate is we will we will provide a link to that job description and we're happy to take a look at that and make any changes as or make any recommendations as needed. Uh, but what we what we're really focusing in on is giving the candidate pool uh, or potential candidate pool information about the library, information about the the uh, priorities of the uh, of the library, uh, and information about the town itself and, and what your and what the um, uh, skills and attributes of the candidates should be. So uh, I don't we don't we're not we're currently actually we're currently working on the Needham Library Director position and the Mattapoisett Library Director uh, position. But we don't have any library director profiles up on our website right now. Uh, but I'd be happy to, uh, Katie, if I if, I don't know if we've provided you with that, but we'll be happy to provide you with uh, an example of that. And so the, the trustees know exactly what we're talking about when we uh, refer to a, a profile. But if you look at if you go on our website right now, you have uh, a couple of town manager positions. The Reading town manager position is up online, for instance. Uh, that comes immediately to mind and you'll get a sense of what this profile would look like it's a two two to four page document that lays out all of this information thank you Earhart, and then anna after Earhart, i'll i see your hand hi bernie thank Something you again looks for, like again thank you again for being here tonight um so i had a question about uh process when uh when you talk about um the role that you will play in initial review i was curious if you could clarify that you know how we're making those decisions between uh, the town, the trustees, and you. And you know, are we grading? Are you going to be grading applications in a particular way? How is that? Uh, what does that evaluation look like that I you should, might be doing? I should I should probably skip that line, and that way I would I wouldn't have to answer this question. But uh, basically, what I what I what I do with every, all of the candidates is to try to help the review process. I I generally uh, batch them from my perspective as a former you know, municipal manager, uh, municipal official, uh, you know, as I said, library trustee, if you will, in, in the city of Lowell, I, I look at it and say, okay, who meets the job description or the qualifications? Who has the necessary background? Uh, and I rank them in, I, I tier them into tier one, two, and three generally. Tier one being those that, these are great candidates. These are good candidates that we, I would really push the town to take a look at. Tier three candidates are those candidates that, you know, chances are they're not going to be the the candidates that people are going to focus on. Um, I, I may be wrong on that. You know, I, I'm I'm always uh, generally speaking in all of the searches we've done. Uh, and at that point, at this point, that's some 160 or so, 170 positions that we've helped communities fill over the last eight years. Uh, I don't know if anyone's ever pulled a tier three candidate and they've gone on to be appointed to a position. But those tier three fit into that category. They really, in, in my opinion, they don't. There may be something that we've found about their background. There may be something. They may not necessarily have the same the requisite skills uh, on as shown on paper. And um, so we 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 just sort of put those off to the side as not requiring a lot of attention. But we make them available to the to the town. The tier one candidates are those that do meet those. That are those great candidates that we think should really be the focus and the tier two candidates are those that you know these are interesting people that, you know maybe they're coming out of uh higher education maybe they're coming out of but they've done some work uh in uh, a, a municipal a library uh, public library setting maybe they're coming out of um the corporate world uh you know corporate library world that uh that may have some skills that they've worked on there that are transferable that might be an interesting uh might be an interesting blend maybe they've uh been in those positions but they've also served as a um you know either a trustee in another community or a um have some type of done some uh, volunteer work in their public library so they know and understand what takes place in a public library so uh, that's how i do it is i just it it's more as a as an as an assistant as a, an assist to the community in their review of the resumes, but uh, I don't I don't rank them. I don't other than just tear them off. You don't have a form of rubric that you would follow that might be useful for us as guidance. Also, as we get as we get into it, we can talk about a, a rubric. We generally have um, 
to be honest, we've we've generated rubrics in a number of communities uh, for different positions. And uh, I have to tell you that um, generally speaking, people have found that um, in the end, the um, the rubrics aren't fully utilized um, it, it, because it just doesn't, uh, many times it doesn't lend itself to um, the evaluation of candidates most effectively. But we can certainly provide something as we go through this as well. We have, it's, helpful, we have. it's helpful to hear your perspective on those things um, as well as what we can expect to receive from you as we uh, start looking at applications. So thank you. Sure. Thank you. Anna? Thanks, Jay. Hi, Bernie and Sharon. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I actually had the same question as Eckhart, but I want to follow up on that now that I had the answer. I heard the answer is, um, I appreciate you explaining your process, Bernie. I'm wondering, based on the, the previous experience we had just recently with uh, you know, selecting that and the whole from A to Z, the whole process. Um, you probably know that we consider the, the input of the staff and the community uh, very, very much. So we, we are very, um, you want to weigh the, those uh, perspectives in. Uh, they are there, uh, we give them priority. So I'm wondering if in your process, what you just described, if you were to um, gather or clarify those priorities of those constituencies before you start piling the tiers so that those those perspectives weigh in on your on your sorting do I do you follow have, me I do I do have the um, staff survey work that was done um, by the in the last search that you did that that was not successful. I do have the characteristics of the candidates that uh, are listed and, um, you know, and I guess this goes to um, the discussion we had about the rubric, for example, is that, you know, one of the characteristics that the um, uh, staff was looking at was uh, someone who was flexible. And I, I guess we can, we can try to determine how flexible people are uh, but I think we're trying to quantify the unquantifiable in some of these cases. Yeah. So that's why I, I, I get a little, a little, I, I'm not fully sold on, uh, you know, the, um, the rubric as a, as a firm decision maker, but I do have those characteristics and I, you know, we're certainly happy to, um, to get uh, additional information. And, and one thing that we, you know, we, we, certainly have as a possibility that we we have used in other library searches uh i think it's in terms of timing it may not work for going out right now to um getting the information before we go out but i think it could be helpful when we're doing the review of the resumes that we receive is we could generate a uh survey that um similar to the ones we've used in other communities that we could make available to the uh, town. Uh, and then we could generate the results of that that would then help us review some of the um, the candidates. So we could do something okay. like that. Thank you. Thanks for explaining that. Because um, the previous search we had, I think the, can the caliber of candidates was really impressive. They all had the credentials. It came, right. you know, when it came to the, the traits and all those uh, the the things that you cannot quantify, as you described it. Right. That's where we that's where we were not. You know, we we're trying to figure it out. So that that doesn't show in the resume or in the cover letter. You see that that's the no. part where we. So so that's yeah. where we we need help with that. Yeah, and that's it. it certainly is. You know, as we and you know, I, I I I wish I could have something for you right now that would tell you how do we measure flexibility. But that's something that we can give some thought to prior to those interviews taking place or, or being completed uh, that we can try to find a um, uh, an exercise or an assessment tool that can, can help us in that regard. Wonderful, thank you. Any other comments, Michael? Yes, I just wanted to know is, has there been, oh, and welcome 
Bernie and Sharon, sorry about that. Um, okay. I just was wondering, with looking at the job description, is there anything that needs to be updated or omitted or just make it more current? Because looking at it as an overall, maybe there's some uh, things that the director currently does, and maybe there's something in that description just in terms of us maybe having some confusion about how we look at that position. Is there something potentially in place to kind of look through the description so that when people are applying, they can, not only can they see, but we as trustees see that this person fills these needs and making sure that the description itself is current? Is that something your group will look at? We will, and we, you know, I've looked at, um, we have looked at the description uh, and I haven't seen anything that, that jumps out to me uh, as being um, lacking or uh, not or, or not being current uh, in what is expected of a library director. But um, as we go a little bit further into this process, we will review that again and uh, and make and make some recommendations if need be. But right now, I don't, you know, I, I don't see anything. I think it's more, frankly, I think it's more important that we identify what the uh, what the real to identify those items that would not be listed in a job description that tie more to um, style. Uh, I hesitate to use the term personality, but uh, interpersonal, the type of interpersonal skills that they have, um, that would, I think would be, is more important. And that won't show up in the job description. That will show up in a, uh, a position statement or position profile. Rob, I see an actual hand. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, my Zoom isn't allowing me to do the Zoom hands. Uh, I had to do old school, but um, Bernie and Sharon, um, thanks for, for joining us. Um, you know, one thing that you mentioned was, you know, in, in your most recent director search, and I think this mirrors our experience, you know, the field of candidates was quite a bit smaller than what you've seen in the past. And, you know, of course, we've been through this a couple of times in the past few years as well. Um, do you ever, it, early on in the process, is there ever a point where you can kind of gauge it and see whether or not it seems like a small number coming in and sort of double down it? I guess the situation we just want to avoid here is you know starting out again with a pretty small pool or is it not like an arbitrary date can we just wait until we get a pool of a certain size um i don't know if i'd say wait for a certain um um a pool of a certain size but and, and i can't recall how you um i don't know if i even saw this how you did your last search with regards to a cutoff date what we do use now um in certain searches is not a cutoff date per se, but a uh, we keep it open until filled. But we give a certain date at which uh, people, if they if they file by a certain date, they're guaranteed a review uh, of their materials. Okay. But so if we, you know, we, our, you know, I think the the um, timetable I just put up had a date of uh, sometime in the third week of January, um, but it leaves it open and out there so that if we're looking at those resumes, those candidates, and there's good ones, but we're interested in seeing more. Uh, it leaves open the possibility that someone that files it, you know, February 1st, let's say, we can we can include them then in the process. Um, you know, because numbers, you could have, you could have, uh, identify a number that doesn't necessarily reflect quality. Uh, right. The other hand, if we say, you know, on that, day in January that we close and we look at that and say, wow, we, we only have six candidates, but look at these two that we have. We got the assistant director of, you know, this really high performing uh, library that, you know, hit all the, you know, all the, the points for us. Uh, we don't want to lose this person. You want to be able to jump in and, and grab that person or in the the other one that might be a director in a smaller community that but again reflects the same points that Needham is looking for so right but
but it's not it's not a hard cut off as you said i think that's the that's the main thing you know if we're at the point where it's not enthused about about the pool so far you can you know keep it going, keep it yep. going. yep yep great and thank you i mean you don't want to have to go you don't have to do another search you want to just sort of keep it open and going there but at the same time you need to um in many of these cases you need to you know we can we don't need the um to do our network type of calling and you know twisting people's arms and so on uh we you know we have flexibility to do that uh advertising postings they kind of uh they go off at some point or they get buried that's a, that's a, a frankly at this point in time at this time of year that's my biggest concern we could post something next week no one will see it but people will continue to post positions on those sites and then it will be buried and no one will see it. And that's, that's an issue that we're concerned with. So but how do we deal with that? We don't really go hog wild into the, uh, uh, that type of recruit recruitment part of the process of we wouldn't delay the posting until the uh, end of the holidays. Mm -hmm. But before that, before that, we can do our contacts. We can be contacting people that we know in the business and saying, who do you know? How do we call them? How do we get a hold of them? How do we encourage them to apply for this position? Megan, just one second. Katie, is this time schedule pretty comparable to what we had the last process? Um, I haven't done a side-by-side, -side, but Bernie and I have talked through our prior process okay. on this one. So, yeah. Yeah, my Thanks. question's along the same line, sort of, is there a built-in flex for the holiday in that, mm -hmm. like is your normal process three weeks, but we've got four weeks for it because- Our normal process, I do, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have jumped in. Our normal process is four weeks. Oh, but, okay. But it's, so it's, okay. it's it's pushing it out, uh, really starting the beginning of, the end of that last week of December, the beginning of January. I'd like to, I'd like, I'd like candidates to come in to their, uh, or looking at their email on January 1st, uh, after you know the beginning of the new year and saying, let me see what I've got for emails. And they're sitting in front of them is the uh, a position that they would be interested in. I thought I remembered it starting the week of the the week of Christmas. That's why I was just I think um, I'm sorry. Maybe I was wrong. No, no. I think we had um yeah actually I apologize. You're you're right. It, we do we have the approval of the profile and then we have that ad starting the first that same week but i'm thinking i was kind of thinking the end of that week that we'd actually start to post it so and that's fine i think built-in flex is a good thing i just think updating the schedule to reflect that so that when we're then planning out the weeks we all want to make sure we're free for interviews we've uh, yeah we're, we have, we're a little more prepared for that yeah we have a number of weeks for interviews we have i think we've bought we've blocked off four weeks for interviews um and that's um, and that's I think that's uh, that's a good long period of time. So that's a little bit of flexibility right in there. But you're right. We need to we need to at least recognize that there may need to be some shifts in this this projected timetable. Yeah. Last time I, I'm sure Katie told you, but we 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 each kind of took a different round and and we split it up and we all have our own busy schedules to try to make it so. Um, advanced notice is just helpful for scheduling that to make it easier on everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and any other I can get the timeline. Any other yeah, yeah, yeah. comments or questions? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just um Bernie was asking about like what characteristics we want to see in a and I, it sounds like he's been at you know speaking that. Um so I would just say um that um and I would imagine everyone here shares this that a number one is the um, expertise and skills, the experience and skills to be the director of a library of this type. But you know, and that's a given. Um, and beyond that, it's really you know we would consider leadership qualities. Um, they the person is needs to be something of a public figure, a person who is um, does outreach to several levels of the community, the staff, to the trustees, to the town administration, to the um, community and to the library patient, patrons. So it is a bit of a, an outward facing position. 
Um, so that would be a, an important characteristic. And, and thirdly, um, a forward thinking person. Libraries are always changing, technology is always changing. And so to have somebody who um, is kind of stays up on trends and can decide, you know, what's a trend worth pursuing um, and what's one that may not be, uh, would be a good uh, choice for us. Great, thank you. Any other comments? Well, uh, Anna? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Both times, <laughs> both times of hands. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Adding to uh, to Kay's comments, uh, the some words that come to mind: collaborator, somebody who builds bridges, somebody who is a consensus builder. And it's, it's some of the soft skills is what the term is in general. You know, uh, and emotional intelligence. Uh, very, we we are a town, and also because of the structure, the reporting structure is different from most, um, you know, library structures. There's also that nuance, right, uh, right. to to consider. So somebody who is able to work with this, the complex matrix of that reporting, the structures, the relationships, that that is key. Right. Yep. Yeah. That that is a little bit. That is a little bit. Uh, different and than another another organization so that's key yeah i agree yeah hard um i think just to put a finer point on on, on something that uh, Anna was saying was is to say um it'd be really great if we had somebody who was kind of savvy at negotiating municipal politics um you know we have a bunch of capital projects uh that are lined up that we'd like to get executed over the next several years. Um, and it's gonna take some funding and some, um, and like getting a lot of folks on board across the town to, to help us achieve those goals. And so we'd like somebody who, you know, feels comfortable um, being in that kind of role and, and kind of having those conversations with folks in order to line up the support. Uh, all of those capital projects, they, they, um... You, you, we have a, a facilities report that lists those. Yeah, I can get that to you, Bernie. Okay. Right. Anybody else? Well, uh, welcome, Sharon. Welcome, Bernie. We're counting on you to help us find a truly outstanding candidate who's the perfect fit for our library. <laughs> um, and, Impressed by your background, most especially that you were the chair of the Library Board of Trustees. <laughs> uh, and uh, we look forward you know, to working with you and helping in any way we can to make this process uh, work smoothly and, and effectively and uh, for us all to celebrate at the end with, with a hire that everybody's uh, happy and proud uh, to, to have. So uh, thank you again. We appreciate your, your, your time tonight. And, your, your efforts going forward, uh, looking forward uh, oh, to the next few months. Great, looking forward to working with everyone and uh, uh, no pressure though, right? You, you, you don't put too much pressure on us here, that's good. I wouldn't say that, we're putting quite a lot of pressure on you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks Bernie. All right, well thanks everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. Good, good night. Good night. Good night. And I suppose if anybody had any additional comments that they wanted to share along the way, those can be shared, you know, in, in writing uh, to Katie, I suppose, who, who would be happy to, you know, to, to share them with, with, with that team. Um, so great. Uh, I think uh, now we're on to the minutes in terms of the agenda. I'd like to request a motion to approve the minutes of the November 21, 2023 meeting. I move, so move. Move, okay. second. seconded by Michael. Uh, I can just do a voice vote, uh, both remotely and in person. I had a, you had a, a no, I was gonna just, just I only take the vote and then we discuss. No, we just have to open it. Okay, good, okay. For the second. Yep. Um, uh, I wanted to note that uh, Nick Pittard's name is spelled wrong in the uh, third last page. Um, who was the gentleman who was working on the Lego display at the town hall? So okay. that first R is T A T A R. It's spelled correctly in uh, today's director's report. 
Um, although he's listed as an Olin professor in today's profession, of course, he's a, he's a former Olin dean. Oh. <laughs> Not an Olin. Any other comments on the minutes? Anna? Um, one, a couple of things. Uh, one request, if the pages could be numbered, would be helpful. Uh, and two is, where am I here? Uh, I lost it for a minute. Oh, uh, just one a technical point. At uh, the bottom of the, of the minutes, Typically, there is uh, the secretary's name needs to go next to Faith's, the recording secretary and the secretary, uh, as a sign that the secretary has reviewed the minutes. So, if we could just add that as a matter of, you know, habit, would be helpful. Any other comments on the minutes? Are we ready then for <laughs> a vote to approve the minutes? Uh, all in favor? We got to do it one by one. Yeah. What makes you have to sometimes do? Because two... when they're remote, you have yeah. to. Do it. Okay. So I'm going to take a roll uh, for you to either vote for or against approving the minutes. <laughs> uh, Anna Geraldo Kerr. Aye. Kay Cahill? Aye. Erhard Grave? Aye. Michael O'Neill? Aye. Megan Small? Aye. Robert Pettit? Aye. Aye. And I, JP Alta, vote aye. Yes. So the minutes are approved. And we're on to the next item on the agenda, which is the director's report. And I turn to Demetrius. Just one thing I wanted to mention. I didn't put any agenda today. You and I talked about it. I'll go after, uh, over the action plan real quick of what we've accomplished after we do the direct report. That's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that got it. Okay. Um, talk about some general highlights. Aaron partnered with Stellar Bank and Weedon to offer a program in banking basics between the teams. And it was a great collaboration with the library and the need of organization. They had 20 attendees. Uh, we're really happy to have Jackie Bateman on board as digital media service librarian, making a huge difference in talking already. Public likes her, the staff likes her. She's uh, very attentive to detail, and she's catching up on a few things that had gone by the website before for a little while. Um, um, Aaron uh, Bassett attended the Young Adult Services Association Symposium called YASA, an offshoot of ALA, American Library Association, in November. She networked with librarians. It was the same way. She came back with a lot of new ideas and inspiration for her to offer some new services in the way. Yeah. Dimitri, at some point, I would love to sit teen services. There's so, so much at the forefront, both here and in the library world, to hear from Aaron sometime about what kind of, what's the new thinking um, sure. about uh, adult, young adult services? I'm going to read Jess. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So we had five new reference staff members out sick in November. Um, the part that non reference department staff kind of helped out and pulled together, and we sort of held services and coverage together. And uh, we just want to acknowledge that everybody on the side. This is great. Um, it was a little interruption in regular statistic gathering because of all that. Um, Al Allison has kind of caught up with that, put it all together, and you'll see there's staff this month that are and they're catching up on that. So we should be on track after this month. Um, the children have two volunteers from iRobot provided a coding workshop for 13 children using group robots, which I can't say no what that is. <laughs> um, they use block coding to have root draw shapes and pictures of the market. They're able to program, and I think I misspelled rock. I don't know if that's an robot or I misspelled that. Uh, to draw vertically on a large magnetic whiteboard. Volunteers were great, I understand. And this is scheduled during a Code Week activity. The Code Week is an international event for youth code people. We have Darwin, the Valero Club, has gotten very popular. Um, and very popular Lego Town Hall, Town Town Display Code, updated recently by uh, 
former Olin Dean, right? <laughs> Uh, and we have the correct name, out. correct spelling. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. okay. Um, and we are, as you see there, quote, we experience an explosion of patrons using children's food for quite a few, um, due to our programs, snack area, play area, and of course our friendly staff. And uh, now we family in town and discovered the library. Um, Danielle, I won't read you the whole thing. She basically is, we did the wireless printing, uh, where it would release the documents. Instead of using, it was fairly complicated before how people would get a wire, do a wireless thing. Now they just collect it from the reference desk. It's a lot of papers and process easier. Um, Tamara Dalton, who just met a little while ago, she worked with Jeremy Goldstein at the Man Library Network to see if they could help. There's a doctor we got called the week we purchased the letter, and what happens to pilots. And uh, the easiest way for us to for our selectors, but all of us to access things like through an ISBN number, international family book number. Um, that was not sorted like that. So Tamara took the initiative and said that'd be a lot easier for all of us to do so like that. So she worked for them and not only did it improve for us, but it improved for the entire network. Now the library is really happy with that. So that was something they worked with. So it was it was kind of good because they were going, oh that's a good idea. Maybe we should look into how to do that. And she worked with them and they did. And so we're happy about that. Um, we onboarded two new hires, Sam Hess and Kelsey Figueredo. So your name is Um, the whole circulation department helped with the onboarding, which was great. Um, Karen trained them on the passes and then focused on registration procedures and practices. And we also added seven new materials by mail patients. So those of you know the program that we, um, we can mail materials and Um, we are in the process of finding four jobs for filling for new job. So I can talk about a little bit in detail uh, without um, we have we're trying to move people up internally. We're becoming somewhat successful at we have a circulation staff member who accepted a part-time it's a part-time reference position. Uh, we have another internal candidate that we're uh, interviewing. In the next few days, that's one of the four that's referred here. That's yes, time yeah. Ever, I can't, yeah, ever. I can't really use names until okay, offers have been made and accepted and done the paper for the next Uh, that is one of four. We have a part time position in children's as well that we're hoping to fill by at least have an offer out by next week. And also internal, or that one is the, the, the yes, we're hoping that possibly, possibly okay, possibly, and um. Technical services, we had several applicants. Tamara and I are looking at those uh, in the next few days. We're hoping to fill that one uh, fairly soon. And uh, yeah, and then um, what I can say, I guess, with, with the internal, it will create a couple of openings in circulation. So that's that's two other jobs we'll have to fill uh, in the next few days. But that probably won't happen this year. Um, but I will say about that, HR is letting us uh, dip into the pool of candidates that we had from before we hired Suzanne and Kelsey. So we're hoping to speed up that process a little bit because we had a list of candidates mm -hmm. reaching out to without having to post those to the nation. So we're kind of, kind of coordinating all of that. And right. Moving all of that. And that's a lot. Now, as you've noticed, there's new carpeting. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It's the last day of carpeting. <laughs> that new institutional car. A flood can come in handy, huh? Rather yeah. <laughs> 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 not have to be Too soon. Too soon, yeah. Too soon for Rob. How's your carpet, Rob? I don't carpet my basement for that reason. <laughs> that's, that's a good reason. Um, said, <laughs> continuing building the grounds. Um, and we we had landscaping done, which you might have noticed recently. And they, uh, Angel said they did a great job. We have a couple of items pending. Uh, maintenance department is still waiting on a quote to do masonry work around the building sidewalk and staff engines. The public maintenance department approved the work for signet alarms. That's the vendor we're going to use for our alarm posts on our doors to finish work on the inside door alarms on the first floor. And adding on to the inside doors on the third floor. That's what we have here. Um, and we have approval, and this is going to happen, I think, we'll say next week, right? Angel said that it'll probably be next week. 
Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Buyana plumbing is going to replace the waterless urinals in men's room, which is then they, yes. they're going to schedule it tonight. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to, to happen. Yes. Yeah. Are they going to go back to with the regular plumbing or to that same thing? No, I think it's going to be regular plumbing, right? So plumbing replacing. Thank you. Uh, made in Australia, <laughs> and they're hard to get. Um, Goodbye. No. Um, statistical report, like I said, we've, we've seen them. We've, we've been able to plug those numbers in there. It might be a little off when we usually are. It's some major, some basic observations. We've seen a significant increase in the traffic compared to a year ago. The study usage appears to be down, but we observed the increase in turnaways, which tells us seasonally there's more demand. Um, and uh, the notable increase in programming attendance for young adults and children reflects a strong demand there, those areas. And you might have noticed the category of juvenile reference questions that folks have seen a significant increase, so they've got a lot more footprint. Mm. So, mm. um, I think. Is the new technology that you have with the category, um, uh, is that helping that uh, build those numbers and get that information? It is going to, I mean, once it builds up a little more, it should help. Yeah, mm -hmm. good. Because it's, it's good. only been used a month, a month, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and your reference is using it. Um, and I'm not sure if all the other desks are fully on board. Yeah. Um, I think. That's all my stuff. The next thing is the gift list. Yes. Is, is the gift list that you already re referred to? Or is there a gift list? Okay. Or did you skip it? I, I have it on the uh, I know the right that, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, first, I took on me, no what matters by Ron Shine, estimated about 30 bucks from Ping Shen $20. Sandra Schwartz, 200 And from the Friends of the New Public Library, 3000 Fifty dollars for programming expenses in calendar year twenty twenty four, and I suppose we need a motion to approve the gift the gift list. Yeah, move to accept. Uh, second. Any second. Rob. Rob. Okay. Uh, we're going to go around, and when I say your name, please say aye or nay. But whether or not you approve the gift list, uh, Michael O'Neill. Aye. Kay Cahill. Aye. Megan Small. Aye. Earhart Gray. Aye. Anna Geraldo Kerr. Aye. Robert Pettit. Aye. And JC Alka. Aye. The gift list is approved. Thank you very much. I realize that we the building and grounds. Um, are there any questions on the financial? On the financial. And I can talk about the I have one question about the financial okay. reports. Um, uh, I was wondering when will we see the um, Tom Parkins funds uh, reflected <laughs> in that? It will take a couple of months. Um, I don't believe the trust fund commissioners have met since our last meeting. Got it. Okay. And it will take official notice from them to go through accounting and have anything that I think. I can't just put it on there. Right. <laughs> so I was curious about Thank you. Um, so the next thing I okay to go ahead please um, you all got the document the action plan and it's an update of the things we have accomplished for working on things that are being hold for the new director so um, I'll go through them and you know stop me at any point if you want to have questions you want to talk more oh sorry Oh, I did forget one thing. Did state aid. State aid, yes. Yes. Um, for state aid, just released that, that we made it, we got the first round of payments. Um, so next month, you'll see it reflected on the state aid report. It's about 33, 4,000. 32 and change, I think. 30, yeah. Uh, so. Well, that was a good Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So these are my rank and the goal and objective. So Going by the first one, goal one, objective one, offer superior customer service to all library users, set aside staff day with facility to work with staff to determine the organization's core service values and priorities. So we reached out to Mass, Mass Group Library System that has consultants, and because all libraries in the state are members, it wouldn't cost us anything. So they're gonna, we're talking to them about having them do part of that, of facilitating that day, talking about 
getting our programs and services. We also probably were there to another um, facilitator speaker we're reaching out to as well just to see, you know, find out how much that costs and what portion we can add to that. And uh, as as we know more, we'll, we'll report on a report out. And we will scale, schedule other events for that day too. And one great thing we do do because we have as many staff as possible in the building that day, we do try to do department meeting in this department because that's one of the most people go to select. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, systematically review all policies and collaboration with trustees and procedures to align the newly established values and service standards. Edit, revise, and review staff meetings. So obviously that's going to be on hold for get a new direction. Mm -hmm. But of course by that point we would have the staff day as well. And we could probably put in a community for values and services. Um, and of course dedicated time to staff training at least twice a year. That we do, we do. So go on in section three, ensure staff appropriately allocated throughout the organization. Audit service hours, cross-reference to circulation data for projected ideal staff management for the department. It is on hold for the, the new director, but also for people for putting the budget for FY25. And the part time side budget does reflect scheduling changes determined by our former director and department heads. So that would be on for you. Um, audit workflow and processes determine areas where more training is needed, begin the process of session planning at the department head level. Um, department heads are already empowered to do this within their own divisions. Library wide changes should be held to the director, but in the meantime, I do. If I flag a thing, somebody flags something up, we can make adjustments as we go. Goal three, objective one improve service, space, outreach, and resources for emerging adults. Ensure that all schools have at least one yearly visit by a public librarian. Visits are being scheduled, schools are very receptive. You hear that from Mary, you hear that from Children's. Mm -hmm. that, that's been fairly easy to set up. Um, redesign the physical space dedicated to teens to encourage socialization and study, designated tech, add designated tech, STEM, gaming, and sound study spaces. As we all know, that's submitted in the FY25. That's the capital budget request. Um, start a key advisory board to work with teen specialists. Um, Aaron is planning on marketing and recruiting for that starting in January. And we certainly got some new ideas from y'all as well. So that's, that's on track. Um, investigate hiring more junior staff. Where the, the goal one objective three, and as you know, the DSR four submitted an FY the October twenty five operating budget is we're requesting that. Okay. Um, equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging in EIB. Therefore, independence of our material collection, audit collection for easy IMP files titles. We we already done that once with Baker and Taylor. Our, our selectors and our um, technical service departments are already tagging our materials for all of that, so that's on for us. We're going to continue doing that. Um, throw libraries visibility and position into the heart of the community, expand live story time at events throughout the town, make key recreation sport spots regularly. We're going to work will begin to that 2024, as I hope we're going to be able to more fully staff to go forward with that. Create a community outreach plan in narrow specific locations such as assisted living facilities, recreation events, etc. Investigate the possibility of assigning a staff liaison to each outreach location for related to delivery and communication. Allison and Jenna had a great meeting the other day, brainstormed about it, and began the process of creating a living document for community partners and location for outreach. And that it'll include contacts and notes. They discuss various community outreach options. Next step is looping in more library staff and planning the process for library pop-ups. So looking forward to the idea. Um, okay. Have we ever had a library pop-up? Not that I know of. Not we've gone so to much. Events, in, but we've gone to is, events, yeah. This was something that Allison got really excited for. What she would <laughs> like to do is go to an event mm -hmm. with materials. Um, ideally tied to the type of event. Mm -hmm. So if it was mm -hmm. the farmer's market or the harvest fair, it might be books about fall or books about cooking um, with the equipment to get library cards assigned to people, get them all going within the system, and then check out the books. 
So uh, we're going to meet in January to figure out what are the physical things that we need for that. Um, what would the planning process look like? What would the event look like? What would staffing needs look like? Um, with a plan and being able to do that at some point next year, at least trial it. Um, it does require uh, some technology, like specific technology. So um, that's our next step. And it is really exciting. I think it's so awesome that's really cool. that we can do something like that. Too bad we don't have that technology in the library of things. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll probably be borrowing a hot sauce. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, just adding to that, I know that at one point during strategic plan, we talked about a book mobile, which we knew was sort of budget wise out of the out of reach. Mm -hmm. But given what you're talking about, I wonder sometimes about a book golf cart or a book eighteen. <laughs> you know, or like some, any, you know. anything where we're getting a vehicle would be really complicated. Would it? Oh, yeah, really? but this is what what we're thinking about right now is um, making it a mobile kind of like a scholastic book fair almost like we're thinking about what would we physically we need to bring mm, yep. um and not necessarily the vehicle that it would go in. yeah but the 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 parts of the library that we could bring to other people um and you know we're a small enough town that it doesn't really need to have a vehicle like the biggest parts would actually be the pieces that we would be loaning out and how would we get that to people um and the vehicle itself is such a yeah. small part of that I just have this image in my head of going to sporting events and some sort of little cart moving around with all the parents and kids on the sidelines. Oh, that was nothing. Needs the Tom Harkins fund. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. So by objective two, reduce wait times associated with popular digital and digital materials. Explore investigate offering sub collection all access to economy and best sellers without waiting on hold. You've done that by creating an express collection, which is very popular. What is what is that relate to the digital? What is the express collection? Well, it, it, it's the physical book, it's top uh best seller, but they express means it's a seven, they're not holdable, they're not they're just a seven, uh, they're only a seven day long. They're mm -hmm. not renewable, they're not holdable. It's like if you want it, it's there. But, you get but that doesn't affect the, the wait time for the digital books on Libby or anything like that. No, no, no. that's, yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Allocate more funding, but to your point, okay. Allocate more funding towards overdrive and van purchasing. That's been done where we had $4,000 in FY24 stated, but stated request for overdrive advantage has to meet increased needs. So that, that would be good stuff. Um, relevant staff should take specific training on overdrive advantage and cost for search purchasing options to become fluent in the Boston Local Library e card vendor. Jackie uh, uh, Bailey, who I referenced before, our digital specialist, reference librarian, she's taking training to the Minivan Library Network Central Site for, for using overdrive advantage in Canada, which is another uh, hmm. service that we all so, Okay. And goal three, objective two, improve service, space, outreach, and resources for seniors. We ensure monthly visits to all nursing homes and assisted living locations related to the objective one. That's ongoing and creating out and that creating an outreach plan to turn these specific locations. We work on books more on that in 2024. Review materials by mail and explore the potential for expanding this service. We'll do more work on that in 2024. Uh, Investigate potential intergenerational programming. The thing is, we get more fully staffed, we will do more work on that in the coming year, 2024. Um, and you'll see a couple of things that work against 2024. Goal three, objective four, strengthen library's branding and marketing, create a cohesive library communication plan, set standards, regulatory processes, and timelines. And, and of course, you've heard me say, we'll, we'll work on that in 2024 as we get more staff and more folks on board. Uh, same thing with develop a library style guide for marketing, design language, social media content, etc. And last thing here, update monthly statistics report to more readily translate into ARIS, which is the report we submit to the MDLC every year, and thus easier to publish as annual reports on graphics. That's on hold for the year. Um, goal five, objective one. Evaluate standardized collection development practices. Create an annual circulation report by statistical categories, otherwise known as SCATs, 
to determine high and low circulation for a number of holdings, use the information to adjust selection, building heavily these areas and relying on the network for less popular areas. That's uh, something that Tamara Dalton has already started to work on, is continuing to work on. She expects more work on that to come. Uh, investigate hiring a collection development specialist, my friend. That's certainly one for the new director. And probably not next budget year, but <laughs> sometime down the road. Um, goal six, objective three, reorganize the training room. The sensory room, that's something that the Broadway Club's interested in funding, and we're ongoing with this meeting. Good. Um, hey. Clarifying goals. Um, explore systems within children's rooms at area libraries to determine a plan to consolidate. Um, you know, see our section, uh, children's room section columnists is an approachable system. Identify priority areas to begin implementation. We you say on hold for the new director, but you also heard Tamara say, talk about that a little bit, that that is sort of in our thinking going forward, towards the future. Really not making it more like a defined region for us. And as you heard me say before, it's easier to do that. Um, typically, libraries start with children's room, they start with cooking, travel, language, the things that the people most, that are most in demand. And then children's room to us. Michi, I have a question yeah. for the yeah. minute. Yeah. Tamara used a term for making it look like a bookstore, and I didn't catch it for the minute. John Fortation. John Fortation. Okay, thank you. John. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Oh, John. <laughs> and John. Yeah, thank you. Um, goal four, object objective four. Consolidate and refocus world languages collection, emphasizing reading patrons. Assess the entire collection to read as needed, merit avoiding that on an ongoing basis. We've already done some of that. We can do some more. Study circulation data and assess spoken language reading when we determine a core world language collection for new papers, take advantage of it, and promote collections available in the internet network. We've done that. World language collections with an adult, wine, and children being built with emphasis on titles in Russian, Spanish, Chinese, following findings in institutional classes. Okay. Goal three, objective two, three, sorry. Invest in 24 7 in mobile library concepts, analyze options to install 24 hour smart lockers, and material vending machines outside the, the new free public library and other locations like train stations and the public pool. Uh, Danielle's already done the research and uh, okay. the options and the funding was allocated from state aid by you folks. Um, but the considerations include staffing and management, and of course, the final sign off and implementation will come after we get the new draft. You're talking about the lockers? Yes. yes. I do remember during the interview process, I don't know if anyone else remembered, where someone was talking about a library that had that those lockers and how it turned out to not be a success mm. for a variety of reasons. Rob, you remember that? Anyone else? We had turned out to be more problems than, than, mm. than they bargained for. At least with that brand of locker. Well, part of that, sorry, part of that was oh, so staging and the staff, that, right? So I don't remember the specifics, other than we were sort of warned, <laughs> warned a little bit about about their based on their experience. We can, you know, investigate and learn more. Sure. Obviously. sure. Okay. Uh, goal to objective two: strengthen the relationship between the town and the library. Work of relevant representatives at the DLC to create an administrative organizational chart to clarify the role of administration, trustees, town departments, and official stakeholders like friends and the foundation. And of course, that's something that's been in the Well, go ahead. I was going to say thank you. It, it sounds like you've, you've, you've reviewed the strategic plan and identified which, which of those activities that seemed logical to aim for for this year. Um, Did we do that together? Yeah. Did we all like that we identified these? I mean, right. we approved a list, uh, was it earlier this year? Yeah. Um, and so what I'm just wondering is, is I, I missed, I was not here for the last meeting, though, I'm, though I watched it, and I remember reading uh, that there was some discussion about determining a process for measuring uh, the progress on accomplishing the, those goals. and. And, and, and as I recall reading in the minutes from the last uh, 
last meeting that that was something that was going to be discussed a little bit at, at the next meeting. I'm not sure if that's if that's something that that people have thoughts or want to discuss now, or if you want to talk about that perhaps at our next meeting. But that's something that should be you know on our minds for for thinking about what's the best approach. I know it's complicated by the fact that we're you know we don't we don't have a permanent library director, but I don't know that that should especially given the time frame for the process for hiring someone. We don't want that to to overly you know hold us up in terms of measuring what what's measurable uh, with regard to this effort. So I don't know if anybody has any any thoughts or comments uh, relating to that. I know we uh, we talked about it uh, last time because we wanted to actually start thinking about that process now with the idea that you know I think last year in our discussions we wanted to have something like a draft by May, I believe. Um, a of, draft of of our uh, annual report, right? Um, evaluating our progress in the strategic yeah. plan. Um, yeah. And so, in order to achieve that, we would need to start working. You know, probably come January, at least having an identification of who was taking on different sections, yeah. um, and how we might uh, think about um, what does it look like to work um, on those sections and build toward that uh, that that uh, draft in May. Um, and would there be someone who would be in charge of compiling those things, or would you know would there be kind of particular roles that folks might have in, in terms of helping us move toward that? I don't remember much more detail than that, uh, but maybe somebody else. Pretty does. good. I I think that was that was the gist of it was just kind of figuring out the format that it would take and the timeline. I mean, you know, in past years we would we would divvy divvy it up by sort of overall goal. There were maybe five or six goals. There would be one trustee assigned per goal, um, and we would kind of evaluate them and present them on a rotating basis. But that basically took a whole year. You know, that's not the definitive way to do it. You could also divvy it up a different way. You could have everybody review theirs kind of simultaneously. Um, I, I think the big takeaway from last meeting was that you know information that comes into this process. Um, to the trustees as we are evaluating these goals and objectives, ideally we should be working with the director to get that information rather than in the past we'd gone directly to staff. Um, and I, I think you know what we're hearing is that that probably isn't the most effective or or really kind of best practice for collecting information. Um, so that was one of the big bit takeaways. But I see Anna has her hand raised. Anna, uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, I concur with your comment, Rob. Actually, that's what I was going to say. The process that we followed for the previous strategic plan was with a different director. We followed different directions, different processes that served that plan. This is a new plan. We um, know that you know reaching to the staff is something that step that we may not be doing pursuing probably this time around. That's what my my take is. So we pretty much have. It's up to us what to create the process. And, and I would start with what is the goal? What is the information that we need to, to collect? Uh, what is the final product? And kind of reverse engineer from that to, to create a process that uh, serves that goal. Yeah, I mean, what? Okay. Yeah. yeah. If, uh... Dimitri did a really nice job with this. So it's, yes. uh, I feel like I some lot. of our work is definitely <laughs> yeah. done. Thank you, Dimitri. And, uh, uh, you know, and it is, uh, uh, I don't think we are uh, clear exactly how we would change the process from the old one. But I, I, I do wonder, the, uh, both Rob and, and Anna have mentioned um, not going to staff. I, I'm totally sure that's what uh, the, the best route. I actually found that in the past to be a really good thing for trustees and staff. Like I think that I was um, look one of my jobs was to review sort of our outreach and marketing, and so I talked with a couple of the staff members who tend to do that, like Gay Allen, for example. And it, it was really interesting and useful part of the process. So you know, I thought that was a good thing. Katie, um, Katie do you have some thoughts about, about that? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, I had um, made that request when Rob and I had been discussing what he was um, thinking for this next round. I think it um, is challenging for 
um, the review of the strategic plan and kind of holding us accountable to our the goals on the staff side. Um, when trustees are sitting directly with staff, it's tough to say, you know, that that's um, not them being held accountable or feeling like they're meeting with the boss of their boss, mm -hmm. which is a board. Mm -hmm. And so we really talk quite a bit about there's one person here that reports to a board, that's the director. Everybody else reports just to their direct supervisor. So it's really to make sure that we're keeping those lines really clean. At the same time, I think actually you raised an example of exactly how it could work to make sure that you're still mm -hmm. hearing firsthand from folks about what they're working on is to say to the director or acting director, we'd love to hear from Aaron about what's going on in the team world. You know, can you add her to an agenda mm -hmm. and have those sorts of presentations come from you all saying, we'd love to hear what Tamara is working on, et cetera. Have that be at these meetings as opposed to um, a function of the oversight of the strategic plan mm -hmm. goals. So that's just the distinction yeah. I wanted to make from a, a management mm -hmm. perspective. Okay. I agree. Yeah. I, if I could, I just Please. also wanted to say that one thing that I think would be really helpful as you all are thinking about that year one report is for some of these objectives, it's very clear, like, have we audited the collection for EDIB? Yes, we have, and we can tell you that we have, and it's ongoing, and now it's built into our operation. But there's other goals and objectives that might be more about customer service, and are we um, well received by the public, and do they feel welcomed here? I think we'd love mm -hmm. all of your feedback on, are we measuring that now? If not, how could we be measuring that? How can we prioritize the things that we're thinking about measuring? So that sort of, um, thinking from all of you would be helpful to us because if this is a five-year plan, um, there's some of those things I know we're not doing yet for all of those goals. How to measure customer satisfaction. That's kind of yeah, or like how would we know we're making progress yeah. on some of the ones that are a bit more nebulous? And so if you have thoughts or suggestions on that, um, I think that would be really helpful. Would it be, Michael and then Rob, would it be helpful to have if, if we're trying to get something from the community feedback, is it something we could possibly come up with? Like, um, how are we doing from the library perspective? If it were like something that went out, uh, something we send out, like, how are we doing? Or yeah, I think that that's, make, is that, am I yeah, kind there? of suggestions for, yeah. Should we do annual surveys? Should we right. brainstorm a list of what data do we already have? Like the town does an, uh, every two years a national community survey and ask about police services and fire services and library services and libraries always at the top of that list, maybe second to fire <laughs> with how much people love it. Um, yeah. So that's a data source we already have. If you had a fire, say, fire is going to be on top of the yeah. list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that is very high level. So yeah. do we want to think about doing a survey that's library specific and, right. and kind of at what cadence. And right. I mean, we I have done surveys. We did survey at the beginning of the strategic plan. plan and we did another survey that I can't quite, but space, the space study, we did survey. Yeah. So here's just a thought. Um, what if we, we the trustees, um, actually did verbal surveys, did actually stood volunteered to stand you know near the doorways had our set of questions and interacted directly with pa patrons um I mean, it's just a, a, mm. a different way of, because you know i think sometimes the same people answer those surveys and a lot of people who might have useful things to say never get around to answering those surveys so this would this would be a different way to gather some at least mm -hmm. better than the ones you keep getting from the bank with a strongly agree a five. Uh, yeah, I mean, don't you think people are sick of this? Oh yeah. So anyway, that's just the thought of, of trustees actually stepping up. Well, I'd be happy to a little bit of in that, yeah. as long as we're not standing outside in the cold. <laughs> Indoors. Laughing in the lobby. Indoors. <laughs> right. Rob. Hey, yeah. um, thanks. So I was just going to kind of go back to you know Katie's question about what happens when we have an amorphous goal that is a, a very valid goal, but one that may not be objectively measurable. Um, and I'm trying to think back to what we've done, not that we're bound by that, but there have been goals like that in the past. Um, and sometimes, you know, you, you kind of just 
take a take the temperature. If there have been surveys recently, something like that, you might be able to cite those. But as I recall, also when we were evaluating goals in the past, there was you know there there are kind of three um, conclusions. One was that their progress has been made, progress has not been made, or you know currently in progress. And I think some of the more amorphous ones were kind of currently in progress um, and and remains that way. And again. It's probably a cloudy memory from a few years ago, but there might be a, a status of review where it's not just, you know, done or not done, but, you know, efforts are underway or this continues to be a priority for the library or something like that for goals where there's no way to objectively measure it. Yeah, Mark, I think that's why, you know, uh, the example we have today from Dimitri is, is helpful because you can break down some of those amorphous things into concrete actions that have been taken. And um, where they might not be resolved in a way where it's like, there's this new thing, <laughs> but people are working on it um, in these ways, these meetings have been having staff been convening, right? You know, folks have been starting to build plans around that. Those all think, those all could be documented as progress um, around the more amorphous uh, goal. Same with customer service, right? We might not have a, a, an, an objective outside um, source of like whether or not those things, but we will we'll have internal documentation of things that you know the staff are doing proactively in order to achieve that goal, right? And so all of those can be reported. Well, what, what's left for us to, to to do is to figure out the process and the next and the next steps in order to come up with a process for doing this evaluation. Um, and I'm not sure what you know how to make that happen. We can all, I suppose, submit their their suggestions for a process, or we can perhaps identify a a, a small committee of trustees to come up with some suggestions uh, to to share with us uh, at at our next meeting. As far and and they can do that in communication, perhaps you know after you know inquiring with if anyone else has suggestions. Uh, but we should probably come up with a plan so that. Come January, we can we can be taking the next step instead of repeating this conversation. As far as you know, you know what's the process for for for, for measuring uh, the, the accomplishments so that we can come May uh, be prepared to issue a, a, a report. Does anybody have any any? We could, any a, we could do rather than a subcommittee, we could do a an advisory group to Dimitri or Katie. Um, yeah, and have them you know meet in that way as a under one of the administrative uh, people, right? Yeah, so. Earhart, I, I had the question of, um, you know, I don't, I don't remember this in our bylaws, but, um, you know, is there any de jure or de facto um, editor of this report, like that's specified in terms of the chair or the vice chair or the secretary? I don't, not that I recall. I don't think so. Okay. I, I think the goals in the bylaws are kind of, you know, in general, they are just sort of of the board. Okay. Any thoughts about that? Should we, you know, anyone want to volunteer for perhaps a couple of trustees to be part of an advisory group to work with Dimitri to come up with a suggested uh, evaluation uh, process approach? Could on the way almost all of January. So. Well, and I'm open to any other any other ideas. We just you know want to take advantage of this opportunity to see if we can Rob's come up with a, a plan first, Rob, and then Earhart. Oh, I was just saying I'd I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, I was going to volunteer to to be part of whatever that is. Okay. Um, I don't know that we need more than than two outstanding members of the advisory group besides Earhart. Does anyone want to join the group or? For, uh, well, then perhaps we should do that. We should ask uh, Anna. I'm not, I'm, I have a comment, not to, I'm not joining. I just have a comment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, for now, yeah, let me think about it. Um, so um, uh, I'm glad we are thinking about how to uh, make the process more efficient and effective for the purposes of what we want to accomplish. I think that, um, making progress as an indication of of the status is very is a very low bar we, i would like us to think of maybe some kind of rubric or some kind of more specific way to to 
assess progress in those areas that are difficult because in progress I, I went through year after year after year in progress meant nothing back in the days because it was there was not it was not supported by any specifics if it's supported by specifics then i understand it's in progress so just this something that i just wanted to make clear for for those who are going to be leading this effort and i suppose there's categories of progress there's minimal progress and, and substantial progress. Um, but, um, well, if there's no objection, maybe, I don't know that there, we need to have a, a vote. I don't think we do to, 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 to designate uh, for now, Rob and Earhart as the advisory group to consult with Dimitri uh, and to share with us perhaps some conclusions and thoughts at our next January meeting, sure. uh, as far as a strategy for, for for taking next steps on this, yeah, I think I'd be I'd be comfortable with that, Rob. Uh, reporting back next January with some uh, thoughts on how to move forward. Okay, Rob. Sounds good to me. Great, thank you. you of course, let me know if I can be helpful in any way with with any of that. Um, You gave the statistical report. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're up to new business on the agenda, Katie. Great. Um, why don't I flip the order of these? Okay. Since the budget goes right into the trustee advocacy. Um, so in terms of future meeting dates, you all have accommodated me thus far. Thank you. Um, because your meetings tend to conflict also with the select board. Mm -hmm. Um, so my um thinking is. Um, for January, for you all to keep your regular meeting, I won't join you for that, but just looking at my calendar with travel and other commitments, it just didn't seem worth bouncing everyone mm -hmm. around, yeah. um, but I'll give updates through Dimitri or okay. email. Um, and then February, I'm wondering if folks would be available to do the trustee meeting on the 12th um, mm -hmm. instead of the 13th. So I think it's the second Monday of February. Looks good for me. Yep. It's February twelfth is a Monday. Yes, yeah. it's a Monday. Yeah. yeah I do not. Slight chance I might have to zoom that, but the time works. Looks better for me. I had a conflict for thirteen. So <laughs> I might have to zoom. Can I zoom and take that? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Great. And Anna did a thumbs up. Anna, okay. So no objections to changing the February. Trustees meetings to Monday, February twelfth. Very you. good. January 9th is the is the is the date for the January one. Is that right? Yes, January 9th? Right. Yes, I yes. Okay. That's good. And I will be in Cambodia or Vietnam. So I won't be I won't even be able to zoom in. For the January? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I would say quite a trip. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, so in terms of the FY25 budget update, um, just two quick updates. Um, we, Jay, Rob, Dimitri, Jenna, and myself met with our finance committee liaisons assigned to the library. That's Josh Levy and Karen Carlton. Um, so FinCom divvies up all the departments and assigns liaisons so that they can dig in a little bit more closely. Um, Karen was one of our liaisons last year as well. Um, so um, she had some familiar familiarity. Um, so we had a great meeting, just answered some um, initial questions that they had. And then we will be presenting to the full finance committee tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Um, it's on Zoom, so you're welcome to watch it. It also Where is recorded. Um, great Plain Room in town yep. hall yep. at seven. Um, and so this really is our initial kind of presentation to them, hear their feedback, they may ask us for some follow-up information. And this is actually their first meeting to kick off the FY25 process at oh, all. Really? Um, so I think it's us and police and fire that are on the agenda. Do we, are we going first or do you know when? I don't, I don't know. So that is, and we will present operating and capital. Um, the only other update I have is just to track the capital budget process, which is um, initial recommendations went to the select board at their last meeting for what um, the town manager thinks we can fund and through what funding sources. 
the design for the young adult space area was recommended for funding um, in FY25, which is a huge accomplishment oh, right out of yeah. the gate. By, um, the, by the, by the, uh, by the recommendation, recommendation to the select board. board. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so that was their, um, they kind of get updates at each meeting. So they're going to vote on the final recommendations at their next meeting, which is December 19th. Um, and so there'll be some changes from the initial recommendation um, for the 19th, but um, I am optimistic. Kind of That's the select board hearing. Really um, it's not a hearing, they don't take select public board, comment, yeah. but it's, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. The, yeah. So the select board will take a vote on that recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, which is soon. Yes. Next week. <laughs> and that's my whole update. So I'll turn it over to you. <laughs> okay. Just in your meetings um, with FinCom, are there any other aspects of the budget that, you know, could, are in, in any jeopardy or are we, does it look like it's pretty? Um... Oh, interesting. Um, from our meeting. I would say well, the general impression is, is that they, they had a favorable reaction to everything that we were talking about in terms of the needs and the priority. I mean, they asked some questions about staffing, uh, but, uh, and, and they were curious about a, a bunch of things, but, you know, I, I thought in general, they were supportive yeah. of what we were suggesting. Yeah, I think a lot of it felt fact-finding to me. Mm -hmm. you yes, know, just yeah, not that there, there were no yeah. significant uh, Yeah, I think issues. one of the, questions I anticipate that we'll continue to get is um, asking for more staff when you have vacancies. Mm. Um, this is a challenge in basically every department um, because you have to plan, we're planning 18 months ahead. And so we're planning that we have to assume we're gonna be fully staffed. And then we have this mm. added need that we believe we need more staff for. So it's just a little bit counterintuitive mm -hmm. from a financing perspective to say, well, you're not spending all of your salary money right now. And you're asking for more, for mm -hmm. yeah. but operationally, we understand why we're making that request. So, mm -hmm. not at all unique to the library, but I think just an ongoing conversation. And they seem to understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, Katie. Um, and so, following that that meeting, which I guess I think was maybe Wednesday of last week, we we made a determination that uh, first that people you know are are welcome to communicate with uh, folks on the select board if you have any connection in order to support this. And we also, I think, concluded that it would be, help, as you know, uh, perhaps helpful to prepare a letter uh, to come from the trustees as a group uh, to uh, help make the case and ensure that uh, we get the results we're looking for. Uh, and, you know, as you all know, we've, we started work on that letter uh, we shared it. Uh, we've received some feedback. It's you know, there's a lot of wordsmithing and uh, and a lot of people can fiddle with it, but time is of the essence. Uh, you know, and and I think we did our best to come up with a letter that makes the case uh, effectively. Uh, we taken we took into account the comments from from the few of you who who offered comments, uh, and you know. I suppose, unless there's any other, you've all seen the, the most recent draft of the letter, and you know we we were writing it as if we were channeling all of you together. You know, I don't think you know. I think we're all on the same page. Um, but it, you know, I suppose I, I I'm asking. Uh, I, I guess if there's any conversation about it or any comments, and and perhaps if 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 we're so lucky enough that people are generally comfortable that we can have a motion to approve our our submission of the letter to the select board. Uh, I would, I suppose, do that early tomorrow morning because, uh, <laughs> you know, um, so I, I'll leave it at that. Is, does anybody have any comments? I hope we're all comfortable. I'm uh, happy to make a motion to approve the letter and people can discuss if they want to. Okay. Anna? Second. Uh, Anna? Um, um, yes. Um, motions would, uh, we can discuss now. Was the motion second, right? In the motion, right? Kay made a motion. Uh, uh, we can second and discuss. Second and discuss. Oh, I can I can second if nobody did. I don't I didn't hear that part. 
Okay. So the, my discussion, I have three Three comments. I, thank you for starting the letter. It's, uh, it reads really well. There are a couple of things um, for your consideration. One is I like the fact that there are numbers quantifying uh, progress and, and, and the impact of the library is really key. I wonder if uh, folks will be inclined to also add the, uh, Katie uh, just mentioned the National Committee Community Survey. And that has really very uh, favorable numbers, you know, 96% approval uh, by the community of the library. That is, that is impressive. Uh, the other uh, data point that I, I, I would like to include, but again, this is, uh, you know, a group uh, decision is the, uh, the fact that the town meeting uh, approved uh, the space allocation budget. So there is a, a vote of confidence. Okay, let's we'll give you money to explore this issue, which is where we're going back. But now after that happened, now we're going back for more, right? That's that's the next step. So I think it might be helpful to include. I'm trying to look at my notes. Um, it was Article 26 adopted on May 4th of 2022 for space utilization survey. So. Um, just to kind of be more factual about the steps we've taken and the support we've already had from the town. So those are the two data points. And the last thing is I'm just not clear if um, Dimitri's title is interim or acting. I've seen it both. So I don't know if we can be consistent and use the one that okay. is the formal title. Okay. That's already fixed. Oh, that was okay. Okay, Literally, you said it. You said it. <laughs> um, all right, that, that's all I have. I, I think those are, are, are good points. Uh, if, if, if you do you have the information specifically that you could share with me and Rob relating to the survey uh, and that town meeting and, and maybe first thing tomorrow morning, we can, you know, fiddle with the letter to, to include a reference uh, and uh, take it from there. Anna, is that okay? You can, you can yes, we, we'll do. We'll... No, and we'll, we'll turn it into a sentence or two in the appropriate place to, to insert into the letter. Yep, okay. we'll do. Sure. I think those are good suggestions. I made some suggestions yes. by email yesterday, and I appreciate your incorporating many of them. Yeah. So, um, no, we appreciate it. It's a team good. effort, and yeah. it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a letter that we're, you know, that speaks for all of us. So, uh, I suppose then we'll 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 take the vote to support uh, issuing that letter. Uh, I'll go around the room. Uh, Michael O'Neill, aye. Kay Cahill, aye. Megan Small, aye. Erhard Grace, aye. Anna Geraldo Kerr, aye. Robert Pettit, aye. And Jay Fialka by vote aye. So that's that's great. Um, I have a couple of quick questions relating to that. Katie, um, to what you know, what would be the process for sharing that letter as well with with both FinCom and with the town manager's office? Should should I be CCing them on this letter? And any thoughts about how that would ordinarily work? Um, the easiest way to get it over is just to email select board at needmma.gov. Uh -huh. Um, just a PDF of the letter, and then um, all five members will get it. And um. If you want to, I can share it with the finance committee. Their staff liaison um, just um, left the town. So they're um, oh. without a staff person right now. So I will get it to the So staff. should I make it a formal CC on the letter, you know, to, sure. to the finance committee? Yep. And Absolutely. I won't list them all by name. Just finance committee. Okay. And, and how about to, to you and Kate? Or, yep. Uh, I'll leave. I'll add you, Kate, and, and the finance committee Dave. as and they and Dave like Davidson, if you don't mind. No, yeah. I don't mind. Happy yeah. to. That's what I'm asking to figure yeah. out. Uh, and I suppose what, what I would do is I'll just sign the letter on behalf of mm -hmm. the, the board. Is, yeah. is that okay? So uh I'll do that tomorrow morning. Right. Okay. Um, and as well, I you know, those again, if, if people feel like reaching out directly to anybody. Uh, in, a, in, a, in whatever casual or informal way you might want to do so, uh, you know, we're, we'll, we'll cross our fingers and hope 
uh, and and hope they're all they're all persuaded by 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 our letter and 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 the facts of the situation to to support our request. Thanks, Katie, again for all your and Dimitri and everybody for the tremendous amount of work you know to to, to help get us to this point. And uh, and we're we're glad that so far the town manager is in support of this. Hopefully we'll, 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 we'll get approvals every step of the way. <laughs> you warned us not to get over optimistic, but I didn't buy into that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so thank you everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, on the agenda next, we're up to old business. The equity and inclusion update. Is there anything to report, uh, Anna, relating to that? Uh not on my end, but I did see some on the director's report, some some uh, events that I think Dimitri already mentioned. Just some programs in plays and the books play India, Native American and children. And we continue with the DDI information, the all newly acquired items. Uh, no, I don't think I have any more content. You said programs. And the programs? No, it says um, programs and displays. Perfect. The Native American Web of Life is a program. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. It was a program called the Native American Web of Life. So that was the only thing. Okay. Um, next on the agenda, uh, Kay, the Library Arts and yep. Exhibits Committee. Yes, we met um, last um, Wednesday with uh, Dimitri as our new member. Welcome to meet your board. Um, we spent uh, for our first. Um, um, agenda item was we developed some what we were calling evaluation language when you speak about um, people's artwork and creativity in a public meeting it's you know our goal is not to be critical not to um, in any way discourage people from doing their art and therefore um, but we do have to make decisions about which artists we're going to display so we developed some language we talked about how how that would work and, and um, we um, sort of have agree, agreed upon list of language. So for example, um, the levels with, we're not going to assign levels. That was what the main, main decision. We're not gonna like rank or rate or anything, but we're gonna look for art of high creative and technical quality that fits the galleries, physical requirements and policy goals. And there's very, uh, and, and there are, you know, I could go over through our whole list, but that's basically what we addressed. Um, and then we also, I will need a, vote on just one small we always are trying to fill the cases which are sometimes empty and we have come up so we agreed to this particular um display and i'll ask for a motion um i will make a motion to um the committee agreed unanimously to display uh in the case a series of handmade colorful birdhouses made by residents of north hill um mm -hmm. so i would and that would be in starting in january so um I would ask for a motion. We didn't get on that. I, I second. A, <laughs> I second. Okay. Did, did you make the motion? I just made the motion. Okay, and Anna seconded. Yeah. Very good. Uh, I'm going to take a roll uh, to vote on that motion. Vote on the birdhouses. Anna Geraldo Kerr. Aye. A. Cahill. Aye. Erhard Grafe. Aye. Michael O'Neill. Aye. Megan Small. Aye. Robert Pettit. Aye. And I, JP Altev, also vote aye. So thank you very much. And at our previous meetings, we have approved through June, and, and we're still recruiting artists to for the second half of the 2024. So um, that's where we are on that. Okay. Uh, Rob, any anything to report on the MacIver series? Um, and unfortunately, no, at the moment, um, I'm still chasing a couple of leads. As I mentioned previously, um, the speaker that we're going to have this month, um, the, the timing with the publicity didn't work out and we weren't really going to be able to get the word out enough to have what we thought was a successful program. Um, I've gotten some great leads, one from Gay Ellen and, and one from Faith. 
um, working on chasing those down, but that's the only update on McIver at the moment. If anybody has any great ideas, please feel free to send those over as always. Thanks, Rob. Do we need to, how do we deal with the, uh, the, the Tom Harkins? Uh, is that something that needs to be identified in terms of a plan for following up on, on, on oh. those activities in the same way that we have the McIver series in the agenda? That's something that just- It's just, just a trust fund that I guess people, trustees and staff can, um, for, you know, come up with ideas. Oh, I sent an email to Tom asking him if he had any suggestions. And, yeah, and if okay. somebody with program suggestions, you know, we can okay. follow the process. Very good. Um, next on the agenda, the, the Friends of the Library, I, I don't have that much uh, to report. I know that they they have a uh, something scheduled for, I think, January 7th, is it? Uh, successful Brain Aging. Oh, uh, you know, the, the evidence on lifestyle factors that promote successful brain aging. Uh, and so it looks like a very interesting uh, thing on January 7th. Um, and I don't have anything else really to report relating to the, to the friends. Um, Library Foundation, there's nobody here uh, about that. Uh, and I think we've accomplished a great deal today. And, and even with all that, we're still not even nine o'clock. So uh, yeah. do we have a motion to adjourn? What about trustee comments? Oh, trustee comments. Any other comments? I'm sorry. I think okay. Jay's a wonderful guy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Katie. <laughs> yes. I just uh, uh, really quickly, I wanted to thank Dimitri for the, uh, the excellent mid-year update. That was a really helpful Kind of yards for measuring those goals. Yes, okay. agreed. A lot of help. Jenna, um, Jenna, Jenna, thank you, Jenna. Yes, thank, thank you, you Jenna. Jenna. Thank you to Katie for the, the whole process of, um, you know, the director search on top of budgets. And we really appreciate your, you know, stepping in. With, you know, They're going to have to add something related to the library in your job title. Yeah, <laughs> right, <library. laughs> um, well, you know how much we appreciate your effort, you. of all of you, all of the staff. Motion to adjourn, so Earhart. Seconded. Seconded by Megan. Uh, I will go through the list. Uh, Anna Geraldo Kerr. Aye. A. Cahill. Aye. Earhart Grace. Aye. Michael O'Neill. Aye. Megan Small. Aye. Robert Pettit. Aye. And David Alco, I vote aye. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful holiday. Yes. And uh, look forward to seeing you in January. Thank you. Okay. Safe. Okay. Katie, you were going to send us that time.